it's time for a good old-fashioned CGC unboxing. This, an economy order from last April that's finally back 25 bucks. We're going to take a look at the grades, the FMV, and what they were worth when I submitted them up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. And before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, we uh, are nearing, actually we're nearing 4,000. I still owe you the 3,500 subscriber giveaway. That is coming, I promise. Um, and also follow us on other socials, Instagram at Bronzeville underscore comics, whatnot Bronzeville underscore comics. If you're not yet signed up on whatnot, there is a link in the description. And if you sign up through that link, you get $10 off your first purchase, regardless of who it's with. Uh, there's also a link to my eBay store and my email and a link to King Con Show 4 coming up this uh, March 25th and 26th in Island, New Jersey. Uh, all of your favorite <laughs> comic book content creators from YouTube and Instagram in the uh, Northeast will be there. It's uh, it's going to be uh, it's sure to be a really fun time. So um, let's take a look at this box. So let's uh, just talk a little bit about what's in here. It's a 25 book order. Uh, this is as of right now the last books that I have out at CGC. I have about 10 books that are with Erod to get pressed and cleaned and sent off to CGC. Those are going to go into the, um, was it the standard um, order? They're worth more than 400 but less than $1,000, so they're all worth about 1000 close to $1,000. Um, this is economy. These are all books from earlier than 1975, so some early bronze, some silver, and um, we're going we're gonna to take a look. So all these books... I pressed and cleaned myself, with ex the exception of one, and we'll talk about that one. Um, I don't know any of the grades. So this box, you saw it in the preview, uh, it, it was opened. Um, it came back to my LCS, they opened up, lo looked at the invoice, but I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen the grades, I haven't looked at the books, been waiting patiently all day, and um, finally going to dig into it. So I'm going to give you uh, what I thought the grade was going to be, and then we'll on the screen I'm going to list the fair market value and then I'm going to list the value now I submitted this order on April 27th um, of 2022 just under 10 months ago and of course big change in the market since then so since this order has been sitting there so long and it's the last order that I have there I again I didn't fast track this economy so it took less than a year I got it back a little bit earlier than I had actually anticipated I was expecting to get it back in April or May um we're also going to look, I'll put, I'll put in parentheses, the most recent sale in the grade that it comes out in um, prior to April 27th of last year. So just, it'll be a source of comparison to see how the some of these values have changed. It'll be interesting to see, there are a number of DC books in here. I think there are um, 25 books, one, two, three, four, only four DC books. Uh, interestingly, considering I collect DC, the rest are Marvel, because a lot of these came from this big collection I had gotten. A few came off of uh, eBay purchases and some other collections. So uh, let's dig into them. Again, I don't know the grades, so we'll explore them together. And as always, it's a CGC unboxing, so it'll be fun. Um, so I'm not sure if we're at the beginning or the end. Um, I don't know. Let's Let's just dig in. Okay, this it's the first book in the order. I had the, I had submitted these alphabetically, so um, I don't know what I'm going to get. So we're just going to start. Actually, this is like the bottom. Um, Tales to Astonish, number um, 90. And this is the first appearance of The Abomination. Now, you'll notice there is a stain there on Subby's knee. I'm kind of curious. The rest of the book is pretty sharp. There is some spine wear. Um, some color rub. 
I had this at a 5.5. Five. I'm thinking that it's probably going to come back lower than that. But it, I'm interested to see how much that stain costs it. Actually, in my own head, the stain was bigger than, than I thought it was. So I predicted this again. I said at a 5.5, and it came back at a 5.0. Off white to white. So that's not bad. Um, 5.0, I'll take that. For, so if they didn't hit this particular stain as hard as I, you know, much harder than I thought they would. So, yeah. I mean, I think without the stain, it's like probably a 6.5. But, you know, it's a, the stain is larger than a quarter there. So that's a pretty, a pretty sizable stain. Okay. So now a lot of people recently I've seen complaining about CGC grades. That they are harsher. Those are all for modern orders. This is an economy order. So there is a little bit of a different uh, a dynamic there. Um, so let's see. We'll just uh, keep going through the box. I'm not sure exactly what order these are going in. So um, they did have these. The, they do have these thicker plastic uh, bags. So I'm going to put that over here and we'll continue on. This maybe is a Thor book. Nope, Submariner. So let's go backwards. This is Submariner number 50. Um, I thought this this was a... Uh, first appearance in name Arita. Okay, so um, I thought this does have the date stamp, but that should not affect the grade. It's reasonably white for... Uh, this is a 72 book. I had this at a 6.5. 6.5, off white to white. Okay, so right on the mark on that grade okay and i like to be accurate in these mid grades it kind of is you know those the, the mid grades are kind of the toughest um for me that's like you know still part of that learning curve so this might be another subby if they're in the order i submitted them in they kind of just shuffled them around a little bit yeah <laughs> so this is a book i'd be interested to see what it's worth now versus what it's worth then um this is, and I, they probably list it as, uh, no, Serpent Crown Appearance. They don't even list this as the first appearance of Gargantos, because nobody really cares. Um, I did a whole video about the distinction between Shumagorath and Gargantos, um, leading up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Spoiler warning, have you seen? The beginning of the film, he fights like a one-eyed octopus monster um and it looked like shumagorth and i do have a first shumagorth in this submission as well but the toy said gargantos in reality it was neither and those books were both spiking a little bit um now who knows i thought this was about a 7.0 6.0 okay that's that's a little disappointing that it came back a full grade lower than i anticipated maybe eh, there's some wear at the top i thought the spine was nice and clean but they might have really hit it for that wear at the top. That might be just worth looking at the grader's notes. You know, that's so this is going to be a double disappointment. The grade's lower than I expected, and it is a book whose significance has come and gone. Okay. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure just by feeling it, I think it's a little bit thicker book. Okay. Oh, for crying out loud. Got to get a purple label. Ah, uh, dang it. Now, I thought this was lower grade. <sighs> hmm. Um, I'm going to take a look. What is the what is the restorative issue with this? Small amount of color touch on cover. I did not pick that up. Um, I thought this was because the spine was partially split. And I put a note on the book just warning them of that so that they... Treat it with kid gloves. Oh, man. this Because this was, you know, one of the more valuable books in the submission. Silver Surfer number one. It came back as a 2.5. Hmm. I did not press this. Because I did not want to potentially um, completely spit, split the spine. But. Hmm. I do want to take a look at the grader's notes here. I... I mean, I'm not, right now, not picking up where the color touch could be. But that's disappointing, definitely. 
So what we'll do is we'll have the value of a 2.5. Ah, dang it. That is 2.5 restored. Mm. I was actually, as I was thinking about this order and like, oh, do I have any purple labels potentially? This was the one that kind of flashed through my mind without any real evidence of such that there could have been restoration. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe on the bottom there. I don't know. I don't know if a black light, which I don't have, would identify it. It has to be, like, I mean, in the black somewhere, I guess. Because I didn't press and clean it. Maybe I didn't look at it thoroughly enough. That disappoints me. Always disappointing to get a purple label. And, uh, so, especially on that book. Because, you know, even a 2.5 of that book is is a nice book. But a 2.5 Restored is a less nice book. Uh, anyway, okay, let's keep going. Yep, Shazam number one. First appearance of Shazam in DC Comics. First appearance uh, since the Golden Age. This, I thought, was an 8.5, and it's an 8.5 white pages. Okay. Um, we do have a Shazam movie coming up in a month. You know, I think this book doesn't, you know... Uh, doesn't have a lot of value because I, I I believe there's a lot of them out there um, in reasonable grade. I actually have a 9.8. So. Okay. Next book. <laughs> and we talked about Shumagorath. I think that's what we have here. No. Okay. Oh, this is Marvel Spotlight. I'm sorry. That'll be the next book. This is the second appearance of Ghost Rider. Um, there is there is some tanning to the book. Um, if we look back here, you can see in the bottom corner over here, there's like some speckling. So, um, I had great, and, uh, and I'm a little bit afraid of how that's going to affect the grade. I had this at a 5.5. Five. This is the second appearance of Ghost Rider, if I didn't mention that already. Um, and it is a 5.0, off white to white. So, I've been, I've been close, uh, but I haven't been overestimating any of the grades yet. Okay, now this is another one that maybe, if they're in the order, I think they are. Okay, we're going to jump to Hulk. Incredible Hulk 141, first appearance of Doc Samson. This is a book that was hot last year, I guess, leading it to the She-Hulk series. Anticipation that maybe we would see Doc Samson and She-Hulk. We did not. Um... I had this at a 7.5, and it came back 7.5, off white to white. Okay, that's a nice that's a nice book. Um, we did see Doc Samson in the first Incredible Hulk film, portrayed by Ty Burrell. Um, he wasn't really given much to do in that movie. He was just kind of a supporting character. He certainly wasn't a, a superhero, but that's that's yeah, not bad. That's that's the killer right there. That would probably be an 8.5 if not for that. That was part of the um, the big collection. I think the with the books so far, the most of the books came from the, the huge collection I picked up um, in like October of 2021. I think the Marvel Spotlight, the Ghost Rider book I picked up at the first King Con. Um, the Shazam book, either at King Con or on eBay, I don't recall which one, and the the Tales to Astonish, the first Abomination, I know I picked that one up on eBay. So, at a decent deal at the time, probably still into it for too much based on where we are right now. Okay, up next, let's see. Oh, there we go. Werewolf by Night, number one. Okay, that book obviously spiked at the end of last year. This is another one that has a little bit of tanning. Mm, that's interesting. There's some, I like if I look on the back here, on the spine, where is it? Um, it may be due to the encapsulation, where am I? Yeah, uh, right there. Um, 
try and get it at the right angle. You can see those wrinkles were not there. You know, those would have been pressed out. Um, I don't know if that's a uh, part of encapsulation or not. I had it at a 7.5. Oh, 6.0. Ouch. That hurts. I don't know if that's reversion. Now, I do think... I do think that there is some tanning on this. I, I want to take a look at the grader's notes on this one. I'll pop them on the screen here, and then we'll talk about them later after I've had a chance to look at them. Okay. So again, I haven't I haven't been a plus yet. I'd like to get a plus. Okay. Warlock number one. Okay, this is a good book to have right about now. I thought this was pretty sharp. I had this, this, uh, what's the significance of this? Um, Origin of Warlock. Okay. I had this, uh, I thought this was an 8-0. 8-0, off white to white. Okay. Nice Gil Kane cover there. Pretty good. This, I'm pretty sure this was part of that big collection as well. Okay, so, still haven't... Uh, Having books come back better than I estimated. You know, you'd like to see a little bit, a little, a couple of those. Let's get a couple of wins. You know, it's like, okay, that's what I thought. You know, you kind of like the nice surprises. Okay. Okay. This is a Thor 225, part of that collection, too. The first appearance of Fire Lord, one of the Heralds of Galactus. Um, these books have been kind of going up in value. Um, I thought this was an 8 0 also. 8 0, off white to white. Okay, I'll take that. That's not bad. Cool. First appearance of Fire Lord. Galactus Cameo on last page. John Bashima, a cover. This should be another Thor book, I think. Oh, okay, this... Need this for this for right now. This is a now book. I, had, I have another one of these. This, a little bit lower grade. I Yeah, I think this was part of that same collection. 3.5 is what I had this at. 4.5, okay. The biggest defect was that big corner crease. Okay, so we just saw... Um, the high, this is the first appearance of the High Evolutionary. We just saw the High Evolutionary in the um, new trailer uh, at the Super Bowl. So we're going to have him in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Not sure how much we're going to have the um, High Evolutionary past that. Right? So, okay, I'm happy with that grade. That's a plus. That came back what two two full two full uh, levels above what I had expected so okay that's a that's a plus yeah so we got a couple of warlock keys in here up next I don't know what's next okay we're going to the top of the list this is amazing spider-man 135 I have two of these in here this is a mark jewelers insert and this is the second appearance of the Punisher. He did appear in Cameo in 134, which is the first appearance of the Tarantula. So this is also the second appearance of the Tarantula. He's got, he's got this... Uh, let me do the cover here. John Romita. Classic John Romita cover. Um, I had this at a 6.5. And it came back at... Ooh. 5.5. Okay. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. It is does have the Mark Jewelers Plus. I'm not exactly sure how to evaluate uh, the Mark Jewelers. Um, I'll put the graders notes here and we could talk about it as well at the end of the video. So let's see what's next. This is the other copy. This was sharper, I thought. Um, also, you know, second appearance of the Punisher. I thought this was an 8-0. 8-0. Okay. 
off-white to white pages. Okay. Reasonably happy with this one. Got the grade I thought. Still fine-tuning my grading, but as you can see, I'm, if, if anything, you know, I'm fairly conservative on my grading. I'm not uh, pie in the sky, which is good when you're submitting books because you don't end up, if you think a book is a nine, it comes back a seven, five, there's a great difference in value there. And there's also a, a conversation to be had, and now's not the time about um, the business model that CGC has and how the comic market is affecting that. Because most people who submit to CGC have kind of a threshold, unless it's PC books. But if they're looking you know, to add value to their collection, either through reselling or holding books, um, they have a threshold of 100, 150, 200, whatever the dollar amount they think the book is worth after it's graded will be. Um, now, when I submitted these books back last April, if I thought a book was worth $200, might be worth submitting. Now it might be worth, you know, under $150, maybe closer to $100. So that same book, if someone's looking to submit it today, they might say, okay, I'll sell, I'll, I'll sell this raw. I'll keep it raw in my collection. Less books being submitted. They've hired more people, so they're going things more quickly. I'm interested. I'd be interested to know how um, that's affected their submissions because that's how they bring in money. Um, and if they're being harsher, people are going to be, you know, a little bit more cautious in books they send in. So, I don't know if this is them being harsh or me being tight. Um, again, I, I, yeah, I didn't, well, I am, I thought I'm pretty conservative, but a lot of the grades are a little bit below what I thought. Okay, this is, um, this is lower grade. This is the first appearance of Batmite, Detective Comics 267. Now, we're, we're um, everybody's looking at DC keys right now. I picked this up as part of a collection, a small collection I got at um, a local antique store of um, Batman comics from this era. There's some World's Finest, some Detective, and some Batman. Um, so you can see, though, part of the cover is missing. Um, because of that, this is what, Detective 267. I thought this was a 1-8. So we'll see, you know, other than that, it's not bad, you know. There's there's some some somewhere, but you know the image itself looks pretty good. Um, and that that missing piece is not the first thing I don't think your eye is drawn to when you're looking at this book. So I thought it was a 1.8, and it's a 1.8 off white to white. Okay, so ex precisely what I thought. Now, um, you know, Batmite is the kind of character that people associate with what James Gunn might do in terms of wackiness. He did mention Batmite in the, uh, in this off white to white. Okay. He did mention, there was a mention of Batmite in um, the Peacemaker TV series. They also mentioned Dollman and Matter Eater Lad. So they're just kind of, you know, throwing darts at the most ridiculous characters in the DC universe. Um, but we've recently seen a, a, a similar character in the Nightwing comic book run in, um, was it Nightmite? Nightmite, I think it is. Um, so yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, I, it'd be interesting to see the comparison of the value of that book today versus uh, April. But it probably doesn't sell a lot in a 1.8, so we're going to have to take a guesstimation regardless. Okay, Defenders 18. Uh, this is a book who is its significance has come and gone. First full appearance of the Wrecking Crew. We saw them in She-Hulk. Yeah, kind of. Um, so it wasn't what collectors or fans of this particular group were looking for. It is still a nice 25 cent Defenders book. I thought this was an 8.0. 8.0. Off white to white. Okay. It's a Gil Kane cover. That's a yeah, nice cover. I, I imagine that this uh, value has toppled. Luke Cage and Wrecker appearance. Orange and first full appearance of the Wrecking Crew. Thunderball, Pile Driver, and Bulldozer. So that is an 8.0. That, I think, was part of that big collection. I'm not sure. I got a bunch of Defenders books in different collections, and then I had to... Probably it was, and I also had to go through my PC to see which um, books. So that might be the one that stays in my PC. I don't know. I think I have a raw copy sitting in the PC right now. Another Defenders book. This, this, I think, came in that big collection, too. Um, Defenders number 10. This is just a classic cover, a classic Thor Hulk cover. Um, this is part of the Defenders Avengers storyline. 
might be the final chapter. I thought this was an 8.5, so it's an 8.0, off white to white. So once again, um, just a tick below what I anticipated. You know, so we're in the ballpark. Yeah, I can see that getting into this. I don't know if I was able to correct what's up top. I'm going to take a look at my notes. There's a little bit of um, funkiness. Yeah, slide crunching top right front cover. Crease top left back cover. Yeah. this There was some, I guess I, I was not able to press the, this out. Um, I don't know if you could pick it up with the light. But right around the comic code authority. Yeah. It doesn't really come across on camera. But you can see right there in the top corner is a little bit of crunching. I, I, I'm not going to argue with an 8-0 on that one. That's fair. I would like to, you know, get a couple more wins still. Okay. Oh, this is a nice book. Um, this is Conan the Barbarian, number 24. First full appearance of Red Sonia. Um... This was, again, part of that big collection I had gotten. The, the, the milk crate collection, so to speak. Um, yeah, it was a, like a, what was it, 2,000 book collection of books that had been stored in milk crates for 40 years. All bagged, hadn't been touched. And they had a, a large run of Conan from one past 100 every issue. Um, so, 24. I thought this was an 8.5. 8.0, off white to white. So, again, we're we're not uh, getting maximized grades. A lot of 8.0s, but nothing above. Uh, there's one 8.5 so far, the Shazam. One, two, three, four, five, six 8.0s. <laughs> um, not that I was expecting, you know, nines or anything, or nine, you know, definitely not expecting any nine eights in this submission. There's a little piece of schmutz on, the, on there. Um, but that's what that is. So the next book could possibly be, let me just get rid of these bags, let's see, yep, Conan the Barbarian number 23, this is the first appearance of Red Sonia. Um, I thought this was an 8-0 as well, and it is a 7-0, ouch, don't like to, I don't like to be off by two grades like that. Most of these books, because they were stored in milk crates and not... So the milk crates, a little bit shorter than the books, the t and almost none of them were in boards. They're in bags, but not boards. They tended to get some damage to the top of the, of the, uh, the book, just because if anything, you know, brushed past them, it was going to cause damage. Captain America 117. First origin of first appearance of Falcon Sam Wilson. Okay, this could have been part of that collection. I don't know if he had a lot of cap. I might have just gotten this off of eBay. I had this. This is a little bit lower grade, so maybe it was part of that collection. Um, I'm not positive. I didn't keep that in my notes, which I do now when I submit note when I submit books, I make note of where they came from. Um, so the nice thing about the collection is basically I paid about $4 a book. So very few books in the collection are worth less than that. So that's kind of the, 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 uh, metric I use for those books. I thought this was a 3-0. I think it might be a little bit better than that just looking at, but you know, well, we'll see. 4-0. Okay. Off white to white. Yeah. So I'm learning a little bit more in the lower end of mid grade. Only because I think I've seen, i gotten as part of a collection a graded 3.0 or a 3.5 that looked much worse than this. <laughs> so, um, New World, Captain America, New World Order's coming out with Sam Wilson. This book is kind of really slowed down a little bit, um, post-comic boom. We should have a half dozen left. Marvel premiere number 10. The first appearance of Shumagorath. Talked earlier with that Submariner book about the appearance of 
a Shumagarath Gargantos like monster in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It turned out it was neither of them. Um, so this book kind of uh, took a hit because of that. Uh, I had this at a 7 0, 7 5, off white to white. Okay. That's not bad. Again, I'm interested to see, not excited to see, but interested to see this change in value over the last 10 months. Because um, I think that that has not fared well, let's say, particularly. Um, be interesting to see which, which books hold up the best. Okay, here we have uh, Hulk 182, the third appearance of... Um, it's interesting. A Wolverine cameo on first page. This is third appearance. There's a cameo in... Well, you know what it is. Um, first appearance of Hammer and Anvil. Nobody cares. This particular book had uh, some issues on the back. Huh. And unfortunately, I damaged this book somewhat uh, in cleaning it. I did put a little bit of a tear in the back cover. Um, lessons learned in terms of cleaning and reading. I thought it was a 6 0 5 5 off white to white. This also was part of that large collection. It's interesting that that big collection had a Hulk 181 and it had a Hulk 182 and like a whole bunch of issues around it did not have a 180. So, okay. 5-5. Five, five. It would have been a little bit higher if I hadn't... Um, it's hard to see. It's near the spine there. That little tear. You know, there's some creasing in the back cover that I couldn't get out. A little bit of stain, too. I wonder if I could do a better job on that today. But that was me cleaning the book about a year ago. Okay. Incredible Hulk 162, first appearance of Wendigo. Um, I had this at a 7.5. 6 5. Ooch. I am not sure what... This is a book that... Mm, mm, I'd, I'd be interested to, lay, to, to look at the grader's notes on that. Just because it came back. I mean, it does have that crease in the corner. But that... I mean, the back does have... Again, we talk about the top having... You can't really see it so much. There's even some kind of discoloration on some of the tops of these books. There is... Uh, yeah right there kind of in the center you probably see there's a little something there but okay forever people number one i bought this off of ebay this is the first full appearance of dark side i don't know if we're seeing dark side anytime soon in james gunn's reimagining of the dc universe because he was supposed to play kind of a pivotal role in the Snyder verse and also Darkseid is very similar to Thanos a character that was based on Darkseid um, so I had this at a 5-0 five 5-5 oh. five five, off white to white this does not I don't think this commands the same value as um, the Jimmy Olsen book it does have a stain like right on the word super there in super town. You kind of got to catch it in the right light. A light stain. So, you know, that was the thing. I thought it was better when I looked at the pictures um, on eBay. Because, you know, the whites are pretty decent on this book. Usually, I tend to have a little bit better eye. Maybe I have a better eye now on eBay than I did then. Or maybe I just, you know, was a little thirsty for that book. I, I don't know. Again, that... It's a DC book. Will we see the Forever People? I don't know. They are kind of ridiculous, so that does play into what people are speculating on for what James Gunn's going to do. we got uh, two books left. La next to last book is Fantastic Four 112, this classic um, Thing versus Hulk cover. Enough said. I thought this was a 6-0. A little tricky with a black cover. 6 0 5, five. Again, just short. Off-white to white. 
just like everything seems to be a little bit below what I thought. All right, this again, this was also part of the milk crate collection. You know, I was I was real close on all the books, and only I think what I have like one plus or two. Three, the forever people came back, a half grade higher than I expected. Uh, re yeah, really, only three books that came back, or four books came back better than my. Uh, so this is our last book. This is Detective Comics, two seventy six, uh, second appearance of Batmite. It's got that big ugly crease in the cover. This was part of that small Batman collection I had picked up. Um, second appearance of Batmite, Batwoman appears. Um, nice ten center. This is from 1960. Thought this was a three. Ooh, a four five. I was harsher on that crease um, than I guess I should have been. Because that is the major flaw in the book. Um, and there is some spine wear. So again, me learning in the, the lower grades. Because that is a thick, that is a thick, ugly crease. Um, you know, the back of the book looks okay. A nice book to have um, in terms of, you know, DC keys. So that's an, another plus. So um, all in all, not bad. I'm going to take a look at the uh, the fair market value. You will have seen them all along. But I'm going to take the time now to actually look them up and look up some of the graders' notes. Okay, so we're back. If we take a look at the fair market value of all 25 books, they have a total fair market value of four thousand five hundred seventy-two dollars. I got this information from Go Collect. Um, they do tend to extrapolate some of the values uh, when there aren't recent sales. So I think a couple of them might have been a little bit higher than they really are. I don't think many of them were were lower. Um, but if we looked at the most recent sale prior to April twenty seventh of twenty twenty two, that total was five thousand four hundred twenty dollars. So we've dropped about, what, about 16 or 17 percent in value in that time. Now, interestingly, um, a lot of these books, I don't think I would have submitted um, uh, to a uh, economy fast track. Probably about half of them I might not have, because kind of the threshold that I'm using is $200, especially for a fast track, because you got to pay extra money to get it fast tracked and... Um, you know, if the book's only worth 150, you're paying about 10% of its value to get it fast tracked. So I'm looking more at 200. Um, so, uh, you know, some of those books, eh. I was able to find some sales data on the Silver Surfer in restored condition at 2.5. Doesn't the most recent sale is 310 dollars? I think that's a fair FMV. Interestingly, the two Batmite books have held their value. Um, they're a little bit above what they were a year ago. Uh, the books that have taken the biggest hit are uh, the first abomination has taken a big hit um, in the last year. And Warlock one uh, has taken a hit, uh, you know, werewolf by night, a little bit down, you know, another, you'll, you will have seen the comparison, the prices. Um, yeah. Also the um, Shumagorath book took a big hit which is to be expected based on news surrounding that character. Um, so, mm, summer up, summer down. I think the Defenders 18, the Wrecking Crew book, uh, doesn't sell a lot, so it was a little more challenging to find an FMV on that book. Interestingly, the Red Sonja book, one went up, one went down. Um, the first Falcon went down in value. The second Punisher in the 8.0 down a good amount um that might be the kind of character if we see a john bernthal announcement that book could spike uh so that's what we have let me know what you think about the the, the state of the market specifically for early bronze and silver age books modern books are a different thing uh because they're more plentiful to find and you're really kind of chasing high grades for books from the 80s forward but you know, for these books there aren't that many of them. I, like I said, probably about half of these books, if I had these sitting in a pile raw today, I would not submit them, uh, given that 
I would probably want to do economy fast tracks. I don't want to wait 10 months. I could wait 10 months on books that are totally for the PC. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But um, if it was books that I, you know, was was looking to potentially sell, upgrade, trade, maybe not. Even books that are staying in the personal collection, if I find a better one, then I'll move my undercopy. So you still want to have a, a decent amount of value for the book. And you do want to get um, the best grade you can get you know, just to enhance the, the value, the inherent value of your collection. Even if you're not looking to resell it now, potentially at some point my heirs may look to uh, move these books. And who knows what the comic book market will look, um, hopefully, many years from now. Um, so let me know what you think about the books below. Um, I will probably not be posting these on eBay or anything. I'm probably going to, um, pick out the books that I'm interested in selling uh, and have them available at King Con. So hopefully I can see you there. In the meantime, uh, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.